He said, I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. What God has for you, no man can give you. Ask those who are accurate, they will tell you. It's not like those who pursue money end up becoming more blessed than those who are accurate. It's just corruption of the soul. I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. That means God has it in mind to bless you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. He has a plan for you. And that plan is superior to anything you can plan for yourself. God wants to bless you. He says the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow to it. So his plan is to see you live a prosperous life. Look at the first man God created. What was the first thing he did to him? Was to bless him. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. What else? Let them have dominion. How? And God blessed them. And said, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Have dominion. It's the will of God for you to be blessed. It's the will of God for you to be empowered. And it's the will of God for you to live a prosperous life. But God will not want you to compromise by being blessed. I told you, every greatness that suggests compromise is Babylon. I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. Psalm 68 verse 11. But you, the Lord gave his word rather. Great was the company of them that published him. But greatness with compromise is not God. So it's the will of God for you to be great. It's the will of God for you to be empowered. It's the will of God for you to be prosperous. But don't compromise becoming great. And also, don't allow anything suggest to you that godliness is mediocrity. We need great and powerful men for the kingdom to advance. I spoke to you about Joseph of Arimathea some weeks ago. After Jesus died, there was no tomb. And if Jesus was not buried that evening, it will scatter prophetic equation. Because the prophecy said he must be in the grave for three days and three nights. It was already night four. There was no tomb. Prayer and fasting couldn't do it. They needed one of the disciples that had connection, influence. And the guy went and made demand. And they gave a tomb that nobody had used. So God wants us to be great. But that greatness is for kingdom. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It is him that giveth the power to get wealth, to establish his kingdom. So any Christianity that tells you poverty is God, pain is God, it's not Christianity. God does not sponsor poverty and pain. In fact, in the Old Testament, poverty is one of the cause of the law. Notwithstanding, if we have to go through pain, if we have to be poor as a consecration to do God's work, it's correct. But that is a personal dealing between God and a man. Paul said, I have learned how to abound and to abase. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there are situations where you need to have certain levels of abnegation to be able to carry out God's kingdom. For a kingdom agent, you will do it wholeheartedly. But generally speaking, it's the will of God for you to prosper. This is why God gives you wisdom. This is why God gives you gifts. This is why God creates opportunities for you. If you don't learn how to take advantage of those opportunities, if you don't learn how to sharpen your gift, if you don't learn how to maximize the graces God has given to you, you are not in the will of God. So those of you that have voices that don't sing, those of you that have talents that don't use it, those of you that abuse opportunities, you are not in the will of God. Because every talent and gift sharpened, every opportunity taken advantage of is a potential door for kingdom advancement. God can't give you access to the presidency and you say, I'm a prayer man. The day the gospel needs a signature for the presidency, from the presidency for something to happen, if that signature is not penned down, you are at fault. Are you following this? So the will of God is for you to take advantage of every opportunity he has given to you 
sharpen every gift he has given to you and by all means become relevant in your generation because your relevance is a door for kingdom advancement but while you are doing that never compromise while you are doing that never allow it to take the place of God it's a tool for kingdom advancement it's a means to an end it's not the end and this is why I am persuaded that most of you listening to me now in the next two years in the next four years in the next five years what God will make out of your life even you will struggle to believe it how do you think this message we are preaching can go around the world he said cry out my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad so God is not here only to make you look like him there are some of you listening to me here God will give you wisdom for witty inventions because if those millions of dollars don't come kingdom can't be sponsored when was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world sponsor crusade when was the last time when was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world build churches when was the last time you saw the billionaires of the world sponsor prayer rally they don't care about God that's why God needs to raise his own billionaires who can sponsor crusade who can sponsor prayer rallies who can sponsor church buildings who can sponsor Christian bills to be passed in nations so greatness is not against God it's actually part of God's agenda there are many Christians that have been brainwashed to think mediocrity is holiness. That's wrong. I prophesy over someone. The grace for greatness, the grace for enlargement, the grace for influence, it rests upon you now. Sit down for a moment. See, hear me. Prepare your spirit. Hear this. Prepare your spirit for greatness. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Prepare your spirit for greatness. See, when God gives you a gift, as you are practicing, as you are praying, be telling yourself, this gift will open the door of nations. As you are sharpening that gift, tell yourself, because of this gift, there will be resources to sponsor kingdom. Tell yourself that. Prepare yourself. God gives you wisdom for investment. Tell yourself, this investment may start small. But it's turning out to become one of the biggest. Not just because I need money. But because kingdom must advance by resources. If you don't, see, transformation does not just happen. No. You prepare your heart for transformation. If you shut that possibility, 20 years will pass. You remain where you are. There are most of you hearing me now. Doors will just open. You will enter a place and connect and God will shoot you up because he has already prepared you. That by you, kingdom will advance. Maximizing your destiny. A call to fulfill God's purpose. Beloved. Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2 embracing your identity in christ to maximize your destiny you must embrace your identity in christ the world will try to define you by your past your failures or even by the standards of success it upholds but in christ 
You are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel one of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying focused on the eternal perspective. As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen.
Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.